Oh. Good, Good morning, on. everybody. Join us at Grace Center Houston, and we're going to start off worshiping the Lord. And we got a special guest with us today, our second oldest grandson. Walker. Our, our son's five boy family. Wow. Wow. Amen. He's been practicing with us a few days this yeah. week, and he's going to sing with us the last two songs at least. Right. Amen. Amen. We're going to start off with page um, 55, 50, 55A, and then we're going to sing 56A. Straight okay? into it. Straight yeah. into it. Uh, Y'all probably know these, but anyway, here we go. got to play some old timey ones and now we play 59. Yeah. Bill Page Malai, 59. 59. I heard our yes. grandson in there singing this song. I said, oh my gosh. So thankful. Y'all get your take your grandkids to church. Get them saved. <laughs> Amen. Worthy 
This is it right here. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We behold the Lamb. Hallelujah. Oh, good old God, he ran off. Oh, 
that came to me as we were just worshiping was um, I was remembering that in Isaiah 61 it says he gives us beauty for ashes yeah. and uh, I think every everyone has ashes you know yeah. I went to a funeral yesterday but but the word beauty there actually translates in Hebrew to an embellishment a fancy headdress, <laughs> beauty, a bonnet, ornament. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, but you know that's what for the <laughs> for for the former ashes, he gives us beauty. Thank you, Jesus. And we we need to remember that, right? Don't feed on ashes. Don't feed on the ashes. Nope. In the Old Testament, when someone was sad, it said they would take ashes and throw them over their head. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and so, but the Lord Jesus Christ, if the Lord Jesus Christ is in your life, you're guaranteed beauty. Amen. Yes. Good word. Instead of ashes. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yes. I love Amen. that. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So imagine we all have beautiful <laughs> yeah. ornaments. Yeah. yeah. 
in our lives. I, I saw something funny, it kind of goes with what you're saying, but I saw like the someone floating in the Dead Sea, the actual Dead Sea, where it's, it's really salty and real right. big. Well, you really can't sink there because it's so salty and big. And people will go out and just lay in the water and you float to the top. <laughs> But I'm thinking about what you're saying, and that's what I saw during worship, was that in His grace, we're always floating to the top. Amen. We're, we never sink. Yes. Uh-uh. <laughs> that's good. That's we're profound. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. That's Hallelujah. awesome. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise I wanted to tell uh, Tina and Paul, we love you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Amen. We love you. Absolutely. You can pick it up. Get you one thing. I thought I had it in that, that blue bag up there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, as you can see from the camera this morning, we've gone vertical. <laughs> we're gonna Thank just you. we're just we're just gonna we're just gonna shoot on up from here. So that's the way to go. Because apparently this it said landscape is no longer supported. That's why I wanted to talk to you afterwards. But uh, I looked it up. Apparently, there's some Facebook glitch. So probably when there's a okay, okay. Thank you. But that's okay. We can we can do vertical. Nobody, you know, we don't we don't we, we want to recline and rest, but we can stand up for for the truth today. How about we just stand up for the truth? Praise the Lord. Well, you are pretty tall. Yeah, I'm not used. To, I mean, I'm, I I have even less room to maneuver now than I did before. Uh oh. Um, you know, well, I've heard. I've just, I've just heard such wonderful things about the the women's retreat. Uh, there's smiles on everybody's faces, so I'm assuming that that was the ribs. It was the ribs. That's so I got to participate in the women's uh, meeting because the ribs came home with with Deborah and and we just thoroughly enjoyed those. That, We've got such talent in here, and and I I, I want to know what you know what's what's going on over here with the. See, your mom, how when's her next birthday? When she'll be. December fourteenth. She'll be ninety one. Ninety one and ninety five next week. Yeah. So yeah. talk about. Uh, so it's yeah it's the renewal of youth or something. I don't know what what, or maybe it's the water in South Carolina, but yeah. And Alvin. No, I don't think that. <laughs> I used to do the water baptisms, um, and they'd fill the tank. You know, they'd fill the baptismal, and you couldn't see the bottom. It was, it was, it was rust. It was rust colored, so it was so bad. All she does is work. Work, 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 work. work, work. Okay. All right. I shouldn't have a rake in my hand, but somehow I know that rake. She won't listen to the. She won't listen to the doctors. But hey, she's ninety-five. Yeah. So maybe there's something to that. I don't know. I'm just kidding. Thank y'all. Oh, hallelujah. Well, um, this is strange. I, it's, it's seeing my... It looks really good. Does it? Okay. All right. So, so even if I'm in there, it still looks okay, right? All right. Well, <laughs> Lila's sitting back over there. All right. Well, uh, and and uh, the men we had we had eight at our at our uh, men's breakfast and uh, eight people were there and we had a good time we're gonna we're gonna start doing that once a month um, and is there anything uh, Jeremiah Johnson will be here not next Sunday but the Sunday after I talked to him this week or exchanged texts with him text with him and he's all set his flights and everything so he's gonna be here and so uh, two weeks from today 
Um, so we'll look forward to having him here. Um, anything, anything else that I need to announce? Oh, the, the Christmas, uh, church Christmas party on the 17th. Uh, right after, we'll, we'll have our service and then 1230 at Saltgrass, we're going to have our annual, this is like our fourth, fourth annual, I think, at the same location at Saltgrass. Um, it, the church is taken care of, so if, if, you, if you can be there, I, th I know I talked to Pat, he's going to be coming down. Um, so we'll look forward to seeing some people that we may not get a chance to see all that often anymore. Uh, righty. well, um, anyth anything else that I need to... Okay. Um, we're we're going to go to Romans 7. We're going to start out in Romans 7 this morning, but we're going to move around a little bit. I don't ever do that, but... Uh, <laughs> Romans 7 is one of the, one of the most uh, mis misrepresented chapters in, the, in, the, in, in Paul's letter to the Romans. And, um, but what, what Paul is trying to do is he's trying to make, a, he's trying to summarize the futility, and I've got it in your notes there, the first section of your notes. Romans 7 is the summary, and it's about the futility of seeking life under the law which could either be the, the law of sin and death or the law of Moses or any, any, any performance on our part. The futility of seeking to find life or righteousness or, or relationship based upon what we do. Um, and that's, that's the summary of chapter 7. A lot of people, I've heard, I've heard chapter 7 preached where it is uh, a, it, that, it's, that Paul is talking about his present life. Uh, where he says, you know, the things I don't want to do, I do, and the things I don't want to do, I do those. And, uh, and, and he's, but he, what he's doing is describing uh, the, the futility of living. And he uses the word in this chapter, the word intention, where we're intending to do something. Uh, I, I, was, I looked this up this morning, actually. Y if y'all heard the, the phrase, uh, uh, hell is paved, uh, the, the, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Y'all ever heard that? Yeah. Uh, that that was that was the, there was a, it was actually a church uh, uh, one of the early like like a thousand twelve hundred years ago that came up with that expression. But you know, there's something to that because intentions on our part to get right with God or be right or be righteous or whatever th th those intentions don't lead to to uh, uh, eternal life. They lead to the, uh, a separation based upon the imperfections. That, 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 that the best we can be is almost good, but we can't be perfect. And per perfection is a gift. And I say, why don't we just take the gift and quit striving? You know, our, uh, the new covenant is about resting. Uh, the old covenant is about striving or trying, attempting to do something that's impossible. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, it was. It, it wasn't. It's not Paul's current reality. What he's describing is, if you want to stay in that system, it, you, you're just you're, you're going to be forever trying, but never getting to where you where you want to be. And that's in a in a place of rest and in, in life with God. Eternal life is not found um, in in our attempt to do things that make God happy with us. That's not ever going to be. That that's not what. Christianity is about. We've been taught that to some degree. All, all my life, for 40 years, I was taught that, that I had a part to play um, in, in my salvation. And that Jesus was an example. He was an example. Yes, of how it was but did, was Jesus an example? No. No. Yes, he was. But what, would, what did he come to be? Substitute. All right. And he had to be a perfect example in order to be the substitute. He was the perfect lamb. Without one spot or blemish. In fact, they practiced for for a thousand years, and under the old covenant, they practiced Jesus being their sacrifice. You know, by bringing a lamb, the high priest, the priest would look at what the person or the lamb. The lamb. The lamb. If the lamb was without spot, they were accepted, yeah. and we're accepted based upon the fact that we have a spotless lamb yeah. that took our place. Amen. So it's 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 good news. Um, we have passed from death to life. Through the one sacrifice, Jesus was the one sacrifice that perfected forever those of us who are, uh, that are receiving the message of the, the good news of the gospel. 
uh, uh, so I, I wrote this down. We try, it, this is really chapter 7 is about trying to be free by intention rather than by death. What he wants us to do is drop dead <laughs> with our relationship to the law. So that is what we, what, that's the ultimate surrender, is dying to the old system. Amen? Uh, so um, let's, let's start. Let's look, at, let's look at a couple of things here in chapter 7. Uh, if you look at uh, um, just, let's go to, ch to verse 6. But now that we have been fully released from the power of the law, we are dead to what once controlled us. Y'all see that? Amen. You're dead to that that, you, that, that, that once controlled us. See, it was, it was in control. Death reigned from Adam, it says to Moses, but in a, in a sense it still reigned even though there was a system in, temporarily in place. Uh, but until Jesus died on the cross, we were under the bondage of sin and death. We were under the law of sin and death that we inherited from Adam, the first Adam. Amen? And it says, and, and our lives are no longer motivated by the obsolete way of following the written code. Uh, the footnote says the oldness of the letter. The letter of the law could tell you what was wrong with you, but it couldn't fix it. Right? right? Yeah. Yeah. It could show you what's wrong, mm -hmm. but there was nothing else it could do. You say, sorry, but you're, yeah. you're dead. <laughs> You're lost. You're, you're, you're without hope. We were without hope. Amen? But now it says that uh, so that now, everybody say now, now, we may serve God by living in the freshness of a new life in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, there in verse 6, the word, this is the only time that the Holy Spirit's mentioned in chapter 7. And so we're, we're, we're coming to... Um, the, the, the consummation of what Paul's trying to do by what the purpose of the law was. And that was to, to be a schoolmaster that would drive us to our re realization there was no hope in it. Uh, where did we first get the false con concept that we could try to be right with God? Where did we, where did we get that? Where? From the enemy, but where did, where did he... Where did we, in the garden. In the Garden of Eden, uh, mankind, and I, and I wrote this down. I wrote quite a few things. I had two weeks to write stuff down. So, uh, um, Adam was created alive spiritually with the, with the option or the free will to choose death. Uh, we are born dead spiritually. I know there's a lot of controversy about this, but it's in this chapter uh, in verse... Uh, in verse 13, so we, we make sure we're on the same page. Everybody on the same page, that's page 399. You on page 399? Yep. It says, uh, did something, uh, so did something meant to be good become death to me? Well, no. The law, was not, the, the law was good. It was not the law, but sin unmasked that produced my spiritual death. Remember what, Jesus, what God said to, to Adam, you know, initially, what when you go all the way back to the first chapter of Genesis, what tree was in the middle of the garden? The tree of life. But afterwards, after a while, what the, after the enemy beguiled them, what, what happened was, it, all of a sudden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil was placed in the center of the garden. And the tree of, the tree of life was, was, was moved, moved out of the center of the focus. Because now they were eating from the knowledge of good and evil. I can be good, I can be like God, apart from God, by doing what's good and not doing what's evil. Uh, but there was no power in it, no life in it. And so uh, that's why I'm saying here this, that, that we are born dead spiritually with the option or free will to choose life. See, we get to choose life uh, because the tree of life now, the, the pathway open to the tree of life, because Jesus, the veil was rent in the temple, remember, from, not from bottom to top, but from top to bottom, from God's side to us. It was torn. And, and that was symbolic of Jesus' torn flesh, His torn flesh, that now allows us to come through that veil of His torn flesh into the, 
the very presence of God. And so we are, we are introduced to the Garden of Eden or the garden that we were blocked from. Do you remember the angels with the swords kept them out? Jesus took that sword. He had to take that sword for us in order to open the way back into the, to the, uh, to the garden. And so now um, we, have that, we have that ability. The, uh, the cross... I believe the tree of life, and we're going to see that in today's message, but the tree of life was really the tree, uh, the cross was the tree of life. It was from the foundation of the world that Jesus was crucified. So it was already there in the middle of the garden, right? Yes. They didn't, there was no, they didn't, he didn't tell them they couldn't eat from that. They just said, don't eat from that one. Because the day you eat of that tree, you will surely die. Well, he lived 900 more years. So we know what he meant was what Paul is saying right here. Uh, so, uh, we have, thank God, uh, the, the fix was already in place from the beginning. And there was a, there was a purpose in that, and it's to give us, each one of us, a free will to choose. Uh, you know, I don't want, I, I'm, I'm thankful for my wife, but I would not have wanted to be in a fixed marriage. Some, <laughs> and so, that's what, you know, that's, that's not what God wants for His, in fact, you were, what y'all you were, were talking about, in that song, um, what was the word? Um, the word that you looked up, beauty, uh, beauty for ashes. Uh, the the word that beauty. See, that's what the Holy Spirit's job is: is to adorn us as the bride for, of Christ. He gives us adorning uh, in preparation for our bridegroom coming back uh, for us, and, and and that's 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 coming soon uh, in a neighborhood near you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I, well, yep, rabbit trail. So, no, rabbit trail. Uh, for me, it's a, well, it's a combination. I'm a senior, but I, I have senior rabbits that I follow. Uh, but I, I was watching this, it, First to the Moon. It was about the Apollo 8 mission. Anybody remember? I, I, some of us remember. It was in 68. <laughs> Don't shake your head. <laughs> Uh, 1968, where uh, Jim Lovell and Frank Borman and another guy, I can't remember his name, uh, but they went to the, the first Apollo mission that went, actually went out to the moon around it and came back just to, as a preview to actually going and landing on the surface. So they were the first three men that had ever been away from planet Earth and went uh, to another heavenly body the, around, and went out to the moon, 250,000 some odd miles. And so... Um, it's really it's it's on a it's on a prime you know if you have a prime video thing it's 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 really it's more of a it's kind of a it's not just a, it's not a movie uh, the, the real the real people that went are kind of in the background telling the story and then they're showing old clips uh, I had a friend tell me about it and but I, they, the the first the, what struck me about it is when they were when they got into an orbit around the moon they were going backwards. And so, um, yeah. what was the third guy's name? Was Borman, um, Jim Lovell, and Anders, a guy named Anders. Uh, but they were, they were going backwards, and they, they said when they got behind where they, the sun was blocked by the moon, and they, they said you couldn't even tell the constellations anymore. You couldn't tell the stars. Were, there were so many billions of stars visible without any blockage of light, uh, like the atmosphere of the Earth gives, uh, that it was like, you, you, I mean, it, it was like, and then he said he, he, he kind of glanced over his shoulder and all of a sudden there was a tremendous darkness coming, coming across his shoulder. And when he looked back, he realized what they were doing, what they, what, he was coming into the, back, the dark side of the moon. And it was just this vast darkness. But then in a few minutes, they came, up, they came around in the Earth uh, the earth started to rise over the moon surface. Like, and the, there's a picture that he, he made, that he made. it's called Earthrise. Um, and in that picture, it was like the, the moon surface is here and then the earth starts, starts, starts coming up in the picture. And he took a picture, it's probably one of the most famous NASA pictures. I've got it, 1968, I, sent, I said I was gonna do a book report uh, on NASA and they mailed me that picture. I've got, still got it at home. But what the, that's a long story. That's 
probably too long, right? But it, it's, a, it's a story about the realization of what God's plan is. It, when that, that it's the only planet that is like the earth. God made it for us to enjoy. He made it as, he created it, he caused it to be, it was, they call it the jewel of the heavens because there's nothing that looks like the earth. And that was the first time man saw it like it was a reverse, like they're the moon and, we're, and, and, and so they saw that, you know, the, the clouds and the, the blueness of the water and all the, and, you know, they looked back and said, you know, they could, you could put your thumb up over it and there were seven, you know, six or seven billion people living on that, on that, on the earth. And and I, I just I I, got, I was kind of overwhelmed by the by the by the uh, God's plan for us to give us uh, not only eternal life but he get to give us a life here that that is learning and becoming like Him in the sense of the Holy Spirit causing us to walk begin to walk in the love of God toward each other and and living in living in a a, a situation that. You know, the science books tell you just kind of somehow happened. But they said when they saw that earth rise, it was like everything changed in that moment. It's like that's not, that can't be accidental. Yeah. And so uh, anyway, that was, a, that, was, uh, that was my, yeah. And what was beautiful, I was hearing it from downstairs. He was upstairs. You were listening I, in. I was listening. And uh, I heard the astronaut quote Genesis 1. And I was so blessed by that. Yeah. That he quoted in the beginning. Oh, God yeah. created it was on, the heavens and the It earth. was on Christmas Eve, 1968. I've watched it. I remember watching it. What's the name of the document? It's called First to the Moon. Uh, the Russians tried to launch, right, right, right before that, tried to launch a, uh, to get something up there before we did, and, and it, it, it blew up. So they, they gave up. After we got there, they gave up. But... Um, uh, where was I? Oh, uh, so what, what? I was just blessed that the astronauts were quoting God's word. Yeah, yeah from, from not, the moon. Wow. They were reading Genesis wow. 1. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, That's cool. Amen. Hallelujah. So, um, Now let's go to uh, verse 24, chapter 7, verse 24. So who has the power to rescue this miserable man from the, from the unwelcome intruder of sin and death? That's a tough, that's a tough question. This is Paul asking this question. Who, who has, so who has the power? Jesus Amen. And he says, I give all my thanks to God for His mighty power has finally provided a way out through our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. Amen. So on our own, it's not good. Uh, but now my renewed mind is fixed on and submitted to God's righteous principles. The first righteous pr principle is what? I am... The righteousness of God in Christ. Amen? That's the, that's the revelation of righteousness that changes everything in our life. Uh, when you become pierced with a, with a revelation of His righteousness that now belongs to you, that's when maturity starts happening in our, in our spiritual walk. Uh, from there, it's just, it's just a continual uh, increase of revelation. Uh, I didn't get to say, okay, I, see, it's, I like this vertical better because I'm seeing all the names stacked. <laughs> Susan and David and Mary, <clears throat> Mary and Grace, somebody might have Grace Center, Houston. I don't know who that is. Uh, Lana Lawrence. <laughs> uh, good to see all this morning and there's probably others, but I, I, those are the ones, the names that are showing up. Okay, now, um, I'm, I'm saying this about chapter 7 because this is, this is the final solution uh, to the, the misery of trying to be right with God by the system of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which then translated into Mount Sinai in the wilderness uh, where the commandments were given. Um, and I believe with all my heart when Jesus said, you know, that faith will cause 
that tree to be plucked up, the tree of knowledge, and that mountain to be cast down. He said, he said there was time were coming where every, every mountain would be brought low and every valley would be raised up. Remember, anybody, remember him saying that? You know what he was talking about? You can't get too low to be separated from the grace of God through the gospel of Christ. And I don't care how high you go, you're never going to go high enough. The Tower of Babel was representing man's trying to strive to be connect to God through what he did. And gr the gospel, the grace of God, brings the mountain down and the valley up. We're all on grace, grace ground. We're all, we're all recipients of the knowledge and the glory of the gospel. This is the... Uh, I, I, it disappeared from my page, uh, Grace Center. Did anybody see the, the, what I put in there about the version uh, yesterday that I posted? It showed a, a guy that went to, to Oklahoma and they had the computers and everything set up um, to where anybody that's on the Uversion app, anybody have Uversion? If you get, get it, it's, it's wonderful. It, they'll send you a verse, a fresh verse every, year, every day and you can get any kind of, uh, all, the, all the different uh, uh, versions of the Bible are right there at your fingertips. It's really a neat, but it showed that he went to Oklahoma and he saw where the headquarters of the Uversion app is. And it was a big map and it showed like, just like what uh, Ted Nelson has, you know, about the Grace Churches. But it, it showed um, uh, uh, every person that was currently using the app was on this worldwide map and it covered the whole world. And this was one o'clock in the afternoon and there were people actively on the app uh, all around the world. Wow. And it, when you looked at the U.S., the United States was glowing. Really? It was just literally glowing from people using the, using the app. And I immediately when I saw that, I thought of, that, of the prophecy that the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So all the atmosphere around the earth is constantly available to anybody who just touched that. When they touch that, the light comes in. The light of the gospel comes in all around the world. I think it's just so, so wonderful. Amen? Now, uh, the title of the message, did I say this? Only believe. Only believe. Uh, Let's go to Mark for just a second. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4 in your notes there. We're going to get there in a few weeks or maybe a month or two. I don't know. <laughs> Romans 10. Romans 10.10. 10. Anybody, y'all can probably quote that. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. And that's based upon hearing the gospel. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. We're going to, we're going to get there. Uh, but... Uh, In Mark chapter 4, in verse 9, I, I think it's, um, he, Jesus is telling a parable about, about the sower uh, and, the, and the four different types of ground that the seed of the, of the word, which the sower sows the word. Jesus is sowing himself, basically, looking for a heart that provides a soil that will, that will receive the seed of the word of him, about himself. He, he wants this. He's not willing, God's not willing that any perish, but all come to the knowledge. He wants, a heart, he wants all hearts to be open. There's interferences going on with the planting of that. But there's, uh, once it does, um, there is a yield, uh, 30, 60, some 30, some uh, 60, some 100 fold. I don't have my chart up. I'd be interested in finding out if the chart is readable now that we have the vertical, uh, 
that were vertical here uh, from somebody viewing through the through the camera. Now, um, so uh, verse eleven says that, and this is such a wonderful thing. I was I, I just I can't ever get past this this the joy of of knowing the privilege of intimately knowing the mystery of God's kingdom realm has been granted to you. Isn't that a wonderful, what is the mystery? You can put out in the column there beside it. I know Tom can't write there, but he can write in his notes. Col Colossians chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. What is the mystery that was hidden but were revealed through the cross? What was the mystery? Christ in us, Christ in us the hope of glory. Hope of glory. Mm -hmm. And again, the glory that we're hoping for is what we receive when we're co-crucified, co-buried, co-raised, co-ascended, and co-seated. I mean, we get to share in His glory by enjoying those aspects of what Jesus did for us. Amen? Mm -hmm. we, get, we get to share that, that reality. Uh, that's a privilege uh, of knowing that, that, that intimate, knowing Him uh, intimately that way. So, um, and then if you go um, to verse 24... Uh, it says the last sentence there, it says, and according to your, this is on page 102, and according to your longing to understand, much more will be added. For whatever we, whatever we have heard, whatever's generated that mustard seed of faith in our heart, uh, faith is, we're going to see that in just a second, but faith is the substance, which is Christ, of the things we hope for. Amen. Jesus is the substance of that of that faith. Faith is a faith is a noun. Uh, never used in scripture as the verb. Uh, to those um, for those who listen, verse twenty five. For those who listen with open hearts will receive more revelation, but those who don't listen with open hearts will lose what little they think they have. So, if you think you have something apart from what we're given. If you, think you're, if you think you have some position or place or righteousness based upon you, um, that will eventually be taken away because there, there is no power, no substance in that. But if we, so what I'd like for you to do, that Jesus said in three different places in your notes there, you see that by Mark, Mark chapter 9 through 11 and then verse 24. Uh, Jesus said this three different ways. He said, only believe... And that was, that's in Mark chapter 5, verse 36. That's the title of the message. If you, want to, if you would, write just above the word believe in your notes. Uh, put the word receive. And then in, in, in John chapter 20, verse 27, um, he said, just believe. So above the word believe there, put, put the word receive. And then in John, then the same chapter, John chapter 20, verse 31, he says to them, fully believe. So fully receive. Believing in the, in the new covenant is about receiving, not giving. And you're going to see why I'm, I'm using this here in, in just a few minutes. Um, only believe what Jesus has done for you. And to believe it is to receive it, Re just to receive it. Only receive, only receive. We're not here, and that's why I keep saying this in worship. We have, we have wonderful worship uh, provided live every Sunday. And the purpose of, of new covenant worship, which is what Jesus told the woman at the well that God was searching for, is people who would worship God in spirit and in truth. So when we worship God in the new covenant, we're not trying to give Him something. Yes, we're, we're lifting Him up, but what, what gives Him worship is when we receive of the gift of His Son. When, when God gave us His the gift of His Son, uh, we're going to see this in Romans chapter 8, uh, what He wants us to do is acknowledge that gift and receive from it. Amen? That's the part, that's the, that's the, the purpose of new covenant worship is to enter into the presence. And I know the women were saying what an awesome presence of God there was in the, in the beach house. 
that, that puts you in a position to where the Holy Spirit, and remember, look at your neighbor again, the Holy Spirit's trying to tell you something. When you get into, when you get into the spirit of worship, true worship, true worship, then you begin to receive because you're getting yourself out of the way. Out of the way. For, for 40 years of my life, I thought I was trying to give God something in worship. And you can't. Every, the only person that has something to give is Him. And the only people that have something to receive is us. So only receive. That sounds kind of selfish, doesn't it? Kim, in Romans 5, 17, what, is it, what does it say? For those that, those that, reigning, those that receive, receive the abundance of grace and of, gift, of righteousness through the, one. through the one, Jesus Christ. See, our reigning now is by receiving. It's not by trying. I'm not trying to reign. I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay seated to, to, and so that He can reign uh, through, through me. I, I wanna, I need to, we need to stay dead. We need to stay dead in our, in our old life and in, in in resurrected, living in His resurrection life. Amen? Amen? Yeah. So faith is the word pistis. Which, is, which, all, which also, it, it, it means, it, 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 the substance of faith is all about Jesus. So if it, if the, when you see the word faith, think right away, Jesus. Because okay? that's, that's what faith is. The substance of faith is Jesus. And the word believe is the same root word, pasteo, which um, we're, we're, uh, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says that Jesus is the author and the, the finisher of, and it doesn't even say our faith. In the original language, it just says faith. Because see, it's His faith. And He's given, to, he's given it to us. And then it becomes ours. And then we walk in His faith. And it's no longer, like Paul says, no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave Himself for me. So uh, that's a, this is a pretty good deal. It's a pretty good deal. I'm, I'm saying that I'm really wanting to teach this this week because this is Thanksgiving. And what, what, what a meal that we get to, we get to feed on. The body of Christ in, the, in His blood. Oh, hallelujah. So, uh, but wait, 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 wait a minute. We're supposed to be giving, right? Freely you have received, and only and only then can you freely give. If you're not receiving freely, and you think you're getting it because of you, if somebody else is going to get it, they're going to have to do just as good as you did, or better, or they don't deserve getting it, right? What a lie. What a lie we believed, you know, that our good works is what was getting us something from God. Mm. Don't get me wrong. There's, there's, uh, there's fruit of the Spirit. There's good works, which are based, based on His life operating through us. All right, I looked. Sorry, Susan's watching. Okay. <laughs>
It's still all right. Well, it may it may go off again because I'm down to one. Well, it's blinking, still blinking there, right? Only one light's blinking there. That's the way it should. That's just that's all. We, that's all we have is one. Just a while ago, there was two lights blinking right after you said that. So maybe when you messed with it, it got back. Okay. Well, I've got one. One. We'll we'll, we'll go with it until it cuts yeah. me off again. Yeah. Susan said you're back on. Back on. Yeah. Well, I'm glad somebody can hear me here. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, these technical. We need to. You know, my tech. My technical department here has got to. It's got to help me, and then Ann, Ann as well. I came close to changing these this morning. I wish I'd have just, I think the Holy Spirit was trying to tell me. But uh, John chapter 16, and I'm going to read, if you get it, if you ask, I, I really strongly suggest that you get, in fact, uh, the, the Amplified Bible, I'm reading a lot more out of it now that I'm getting a real foundation in the, in the, the Passion Translation. Um, but I want you to see that we've got some. We've got a verse coming up here in just a minute. Uh, John chapter sixteen and verse thirty-three. Um, I, I love I love the Gospel of John. I loved we we going through John was such a blessing to me, uh, and I hope it was for you. But remember, I said that John um, the first. Uh, 11, tw the tw 13, 14, 15, 16. The, the first 12 chapters of John was about public ministry. And then starting with chapter, John chapter 13, 14, 15, and 16 was about personal ministry. So it was to, it was to us in a personal way. So he went from being public because he wants, any, every, wants everybody out there to hear. And there were seven signs and seven miracles uh, that he did in, in, that are written in Gospels, John, for the purpose that John said in and later in the chapter, later in John's letter, for the purpose that for those that didn't believe to come to faith, to come to believing in Jesus. Amen? And so, but these, these chapters, chapter, chapter uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, was personal ministry to his, for, for believers, for believers. And all four of those chapters happened in the last night he was alive. The last, the last night. And so uh, he, he summarizes in chapter, uh, I'm going to read out of the Amplified. Um, it says, uh, I've, I've told you these things, what things? Uh, all this personal ministry that I've gone over with you about the Holy Spirit coming in my place, um, how important that, that will be to your life. Um, I have told you these things that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. There's only one kind of, one perfect peace and that's the one that's found in Christ. There's no other possibility for peace. Peace on earth, goodwill toward men is, the, is the, the message of the gospel. But when you receive him, you receive his perfect peace. Uh, and the reason for this, he said, uh, in the world, he said there in, the, in, the, in the amplified version, he says there's four things. You, you have tribulation. Anybody ever had any of that? Uh, and trials. Anybody had any of those? Um, and uh, there's good news with this. I'm, I'm not just telling you this. Uh, I'm not going to leave you hanging with this. Um, and distress. You ever had any distress? Okay. Uh, well, then you're on, you're on page with what Jesus said here. And frustration. Anybody had any frustration? Okay. Those are the things he said. In the, in the world, you're going to have those. Oh, joy. But the joy of the Lord is our strength, right? Because for the joy that was set before Him, knowing that we would be His, He endured the cross. So, He says, He doesn't leave that hanging. He said, but be of good cheer. Take courage. 
For I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of, of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. Amen. So there's nothing in this world that can ever, and we're going to see that in Romans 8, there is no condemnation, no longer any condemnation. That's verse 1, right? And the last part of chapter 8 is there's no separation. And in between 19 times in the Passion Translation, the word the Holy Spirit is is utilized in that one chapter. It's going to take me a few weeks to get through Romans 8. That's why I wanted to get through 7 uh, and culminating with the, the hopelessness of, of uh, the, any other life besides the life we have in Christ. Amen? Uh, so only believe. Just believe. Fully believe. Fully receive. Uh, it's all been, all of it's been conquered. Now, I used to think that chapter 17, which is the Lord's Prayer, we always think of the Lord's Prayer being, you know, the one that everybody quotes when, he, when His disciples ask Him to teach us how to pray. Uh, this is the Lord's Prayer in, in John 17. And you are part of this prayer. I said this to the men at that breakfast that the other day. Uh, it would, can, could, could, if you don't have faith in your prayer completely yet, do you, do you, would you have a faith in, the, in what Jesus prayed coming to pass? Read, when you read chapter 17, read it from that perspective. That everything in here was going to happen. Either instantly or in the fullness of time. Amen? Everything that He prayed. Okay? And so, the question is, what is eternal life? What is eternal life? Without end. Yeah, it's without end, but what is it? What is eternal life? It's the God kind of life. <laughs> yeah. That way you experience God. Yeah. There you go. So you, 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 read, you, read the, you read ahead. It's, it's, uh, it says, uh, verse 2, You have, and this is the Father, you have granted Him power and authority over all flesh, all humankind. Now glorify Him so that He may give li eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life. He, just, he describes it. Um, to know, to perceive, recognize, I'm reading out of the Amplified, recognize, become acquainted with, and understand you, the only true and real God, and likewise to know him, Jesus, as the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, whom you have sent. That's what eternal life is, is to know the Father by knowing the Son who was sent by the Father to us. Amen? And then um, the part, you know, he prays for his disciples, but then let's go to verse 20 real quick. I've got, I'm running out of time here. Uh, um, <laughs> okay. okay, are we all, are we all right? Uh, we still got volume? Okay. All right. Okay, so... Uh, Neither for these alone, he's not just praying praying for the, the 12 disciples, do I pray for, or actually it was 11 at that time then, uh, I pray that it's not for their sake only that I make this request, but also for all, what's the Greek word for all? All. all that's right. Those who will ever, everybody see the word ever? Become to believe in, trust in, rely, cling to me through their word and teaching, that they all may be one. Just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, so that the world may believe and be convinced that you have sent me. That's good news. See, that prayer is your destiny. No matter what's going on, the frustrations, we just, we just learned the four things he said they're going to happen. But in, in the midst of all of it, your purpose, Perfect, permanent destiny is one with the Father and one with the Son in the same measure that they're one with each other, or one in each other. Is that, is that good? Is that good news? Okay. Sure sounds good to me. Okay. Now, this, this part here, so this is, this is Jesus' intercessory prayer for us. And I used to think this was in the garden. Until actually, till this week, I thought it was he was praying this prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane.
Now the red light is blinking. That's probably not a good thing, is it? Battery low. <laughs> it's. Yeah, it's good. Now it's, I've got new batteries now. I've got new life support here. So that won't happen again today anyway. All right. To him who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the, to the church. Read my lips. No. No new taxes. You have to be you have to be a little older to remember that too. Who said that by the way? Was it No. Bush Senior. And then when he tax when he got new taxes out the door, you know. Okay. Uh, now, uh, John chapter then John chapter seventeen. Uh, John 17. Sorry for the confusion, confusion, folks. It's. Uh, Are you on 27? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm. I'm. I'm going to John uh, 17 now. We did 20 and 21, right? Okay. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 13. I actually put the uh, amplified version in your notes. Everybody see that? Yeah. Oh. Okay, yeah, Mary, Mary got it right. Bush, you came up with the right answer. Uh, so anyway, Jesus didn't pray this. He prayed this while He was still in the upper room. And He prayed it for us. Uh, and then He went, then it says He went out and walked through the Kidron Valley that David went through when he was running from his son Absalom, who uh, was trying to kill him. And He ran through uh, into the garden and that's where things began to, to, to happen. Uh, for, uh, so, uh, in the world, we're going to have those four things that are going to be happening to us. But it says now in, in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, uh, 13, verses 12 and 13, uh, for now we are looking in a mirror that gives only a dim, blurred reflection I want you to really pay attention to this because this is so important for us. Um, a, a dim, blurred reflection of the reality, of reality as in a riddle or an enigma. That's something, that's a question that seems to have no answer. But then when perfection comes, we shall see in reality and face to face. Now I know in part, imperfectly, but then I shall know and understand fully and clearly. Now, this is the part I want you to pay really pay attention to. Even in the same manner as I have been fully and clearly known and understood by God. So, a lot of words to say that God already knows you for who you really are. And He's trying to get us to understand who we really are. Now, notice what He says we're looking in. How does, how does the verse start off? We're looking in a mirror. Why are we looking in a mirror? Because we're supposed to be seeing It's, you know, I know Deborah, I think Deborah was the one, were you the one who talked about beholding uh, the verse, that's 2 Corinthians 3.18. Beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, we are changed 
into the very same image from glory to glory by what? By the Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit is revealing, continuously revealing to us more and more from glory to glory, greater, greater understanding as we receive, as we only receive, as we keep receiving of the gift of grace, of His grace and the gift of righteousness. Uh, our reigning begins to go up as we focus on receiving. Amen? Uh, but it says that Paul is saying the real you is already known. He's trying to get it through to us. Don't you really want to know who you are? Keep, keep looking in that mirror. And the mirror is there both in this verse and, and Romans, I mean, 2 Corinthians 3.18. Because when you look in the mirror in the morning, when you get up and look in the mirror, what are you supposed to see? What, what is the mystery? Christ in us is the hope of glory. He now lives in, in you. So when we're beholding in that mirror, we're beholding His life in ours. It's no longer me living. It's, no, it's not you living anymore, Barbara. It's not you. It's Him, right? He's living in you. If we can just forget the part about us still being, sometimes wanting, the enemy's purpose is to get us into what? Unbelief. When we go into unbelief, we're going back to self. Whatever you want to put behind the word self. Self-righteousness, self, uh, self-motivation. Anybody got, you know, bought a book or two on that? Self-motivation? How did that work out for you? But the, <laughs> it doesn't last. Very good, Ike. That's, that's the part. There's a little bit of glory in it. Remember when, you know, Moses had a little bit of glory, but it was fading. But it was fading. That's why he put, put his veil on, so he didn't want to see the, the, the fades, the, the fade to black, you know, the, to where there was no more visible light. No more light. Um, so we have that mirror. When we look in the mirror, we're supposed to see him in us. And we're supposed to, and he's want, Paul's wanting us to know. Now look at this. And so there's three things that remain. This is in the love chapter, chapter 13. Y'all with me? This is the love chapter. Um, this is in your notes. This is the, the Amplified. I want you to see this. Um, I thank, God, I thank you that you know me the way I really am. Aren't you, aren't you thankful? This week on Thanksgiving, I'm, I'm so thankful that he knows the real me better than I you do at this point. And he will never give up on getting us to see the real us Amen? Yes. He wants us to see who we really are in Christ. Right? Yes. And if we keep beholding, that's what you were teaching on, right? Beholding. Can I add something real quick? Sure, so absolutely. I was listening to New Creation Church this morning. One of the associate pastors was teaching on being dead in Christ. And you know he said something that just popped in my heart? I loved it. He said, you're never... Too much trouble for the Lord. In no. Transformation. You're never too much trouble for the Lord. He goes to every link to save every part of you. You're never too much trouble for Him. And that just spoke volumes. Yeah. I mean, if if Everyone. we if if we think that we can recover in and of something we do or for something we do by do, by us doing something then we, we, didn't, we didn't need the sacrifice. It's a perfect offering, a perfect sacrifice that covers everything. Uh, and, and, you know, when the enemy comes, he said, Jesus said, when he comes after you and comes against you, just agree with him quickly. You know, yeah, you're right. But talk to the hand. <laughs> you know, you'd have uh, hey, You know, he took it. So I'm not going to carry it anymore. I'm not going one step further with this. I'm letting go of it. Okay, but, but look, look, three things remain. Uh, um, faith, and I like this, I like the Amplified because it gives you the definition. Faith is a conviction and belief respecting man's relation to God and divine things. So the, the, word, the word faith is the noun part is, to, is the conviction of truth about Jesus being the substance of that. And then your belief is responding 
to the reality of that. Uh, and then hope is the joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation. That's something that's pretty good on Thanksgiving, right? But I love this one. Those two that we just talked about, faith and hope, will one day not be a part of our eternity. We won't have faith and we won't have hope because it'll all be realized. We just saw that, right? In fact, He already knows the, the face to face is coming. He already knows and, and He already knows us. But this, I love this love. Love is defined here in the Amplified as true affection. Y'all see this in your notes? True affection for God. True affection. Uh, for God and man growing out of God's love for and in us. So if you want to love, truly love God or truly love your neighbor, it's going to come out of growing, it, this growing out of God's love for us. Right? And in us. Y'all see that? That's the only way to true love is it, that it's His love growing that's growing that out of our lives. It's not about us. And I want you to see this uh, in the next chapter. It's not related, connected to this per se, but I want you to see this. Um, it's, it's in your notes. This is chapter where the word but there um, is chapter 14, verse 3. On the other hand, the one, he's talking about uh, speaking in tongues versus prophecy. When you're speaking in tongues, you're speaking mysteries. The Holy Spirit knows, right? He, he knows. And sometimes you don't need to know as long as you know that He knows. Anybody been there? This week for me, yeah. Yeah, kids. Uh, exactly. But thank God He knows. And thank God He won't get confused about it like we do. Kids can be a little confusing at times, right? Yeah. They can cause a little confusion. Okay. Uh, and God's not the author of confusion, is He? <laughs> so anyway, the Holy Spirit knows what to pray. So then He's making this contract, but, uh, contrast. But on the other hand, the one who prophesies... Now look at what prophecy is. And that's the question on, this, on the notes here. What is prophecy? The one who prophesies is one who interprets the divine will and purpose in inspired preaching and teaching. He speaks to men for, their, for, for three things. Upbuilding, uh -huh. yeah. constructive spiritual progress, and encouragement and consolation. Amen. So what is prophecy? Edification, exhortation, and comfort to men that's, that's carried out not by saying, you know, there are words of knowledge that's going to say, well, I, you know, the Lord gave me a word of knowledge about you on December the 14th. Something's going to happen in a really good way or whatever. But that's the prophecy in general, New Covenant prophecy. This is why, he's, this is why Paul said he wanted us all to prophesy. Yeah. Because, see, we can all come under the anointing of the Holy Spirit to uh, interpret the divine will and purpose and have inspired preaching and teaching. See, we can... There's nothing like coming under an anointing to minister the Word. There's nothing like it. Because you know you're standing up here, but you know you're not speaking out of yourself. Uh, and sometimes I'll say things that I, I don't even know. Where did that come from? Well, I know where it came from. It came from the Holy Spirit, and that's what prophecy. But don't let somebody bring anything but those things to you in the name of the Lord and in the name of the Gospel. If they're trying to condemn you for something... You know, we, we honor God by becoming like children and we, we receive correction. But His correction doesn't come with condemnation. So if there's any condemnation in it, it's not His correction. Uh, you know, my dad even said when I was a kid, now it's going to hurt me more than it hurts you. I'm not sure I ever believed that, but I know it did. And it's not easy to, you know, but he's going to correct us if we're, if we're his children. He's going to correct us. But that's not the same as condemnation. Uh, there is no condemnation. There is no separation. Amen. So the fivefold ministry is really a steering committee. And the objective of the steering committee is to steer you into hearing 
the um, interpreting the divine will and purpose and inspiring preaching and teaching. It's, it's, it's to move you in the direction that the Holy Spirit's trying to lead you and bring you into. I'm not going to say anything. The fivefold ministry is really a steering committee. You know, I heard, I, have you ever heard this? If, you know, God is my, the Holy Spirit's my co pilot? No. You ever heard that? Yeah. Hey, if He is, change seats. <laughs> Amen? I don't want to be the pilot. I want to be on autopilot. I want to automatically be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. Hallelujah, right? Amen? So if, you, if He's your, your co-pilot, switch seats. <laughs> Eric, what are the five, we were just talking about what's the five-fold ministry? Okay, it's uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. I believe, I believe uh, uh, Jeremiah is, has an evangelistic gift. Uh, but he operates as if you if y'all never heard him before, he'll be here in a couple of weeks. Uh, what he's a uh, pro, uh, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. So all of those fivefold ministries are really trying to steer us into hearing exhort edification, exhortation, and comfort by the Holy Spirit, because he wants us to he wants us to have life and life more abundantly. So he's going to lead us into the identity uh, and inheritance that we have. And I'm telling you, chapter 8 is just, we're going we're gonna to look at chapter 8 along with Hebrews 12, but they're, they're just, uh, that's why I know Paul wrote Hebrews, is because of, because of Romans chapter 8, if nothing else. All right. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> well, I've, I've, got, I've got half a, half a page left. Oh, okay. No, no. communion, let's, let's take communion together. It's not the Holy Spirit. Yeah, there's a lot of spirits. There's a lot of spirits out there. And remember, one of the one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is actually the discerning of spirits. And that doesn't mean you're 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 looking for demons under every tree. It's not. That's not what it means. It's being to, able to determine what is divine inspiration, divine message. Uh, where is it? There, there's a little one there. So the, the dis discerning of spirits is being able to discern what is a message from, from the Holy Spirit versus a message from some, some other spirit. That's a deceiving spirit. Deceiving spirits, will you'll always end up in some kind of bondage. And, and the true spirit, under the steerage of the committee, will always release you from bondage to, into His glorious liberty. There's, you know, the liberty that we have in Christ is a glorious liberty. Amen? Hallelujah. I like the way, I like the way, yeah, I like the way Joseph Prince put it, because I smell a rat. <laughs> I smell a rat, yeah. <laughs> Something's not right. <laughs> yeah. Amen. We had a glorious weekend, and I tell you, we were really experiencing uh, the freedom that you're talking about. Yeah, it's there's nothing like it. There, there's just no, nothing like it. Uh, so uh, John, uh, the, the communion verse is John chapter six. It's in your notes there at the bottom of the page. John six. And I really want you just to get, uh, really, we have other verses here, but we're running out. Of, everybody's getting sleepy, right? Am I putting anybody to sleep? No. Oh. <laughs> and the truth will set you free, right? <laughs> Thank you. That was, yes, amen. I used to, I mean, I remember back a year when I was like four, three or four years old sleeping under the pew. 
And probably a lot of it is probably a good thing I was asleep, you know, because <laughs> yeah. some of the stuff we were hearing, I didn't need to be hearing anyway. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. The Spirit was giving me uh, uh, rest. rest and, uh, you know, dreams. Okay, I just want to, one verse, I know we have several there, but I just want to look at verse 54. Uh, Eternal life comes to the one who eats my uh, body and drinks my blood, and I will raise him up in the last day. Uh, do you want to see something? Look, go back up to verse, uh, I said one verse, but I'm going, to, I'm going to do two. Verse 40. Y'all see verse 40 there? For the longing of my Father is that everyone who embraces the Son and believes in Him will experience eternal life and I will raise Him up, raise them up on the last day. That's the longing of our Father. Is that we would believe in the gift of His Son whom He sent for us. That's the longing. The Father's not against us. He's longing for us to have life in the Son. That's the plan. Jesus is the work. And now the Holy Spirit is giving us witness to that truth. So, uh, so if you look at the footnote there on the word body, uh, in verse 54, it says, to, to eat His flesh is to take into our life by faith all that Jesus did for us by giving His body for us. To drink His blood is to take by faith all that the blood of Jesus has purchased for us. This eating and drinking is receiving, everybody say receiving, uh, the life, power, and virtue of all that Jesus is to, uh, all that Jesus uh, is to replace all that we were in Adam. Now this last sentence, Jesus' blood and body is the tree of life. This is the tree of life which is offered to everyone who follows Him. Lord, we thank You that we get to partake of, of the tree of life in the midst of the garden once again, and that garden is now in us. And You want, you want us to tend that garden by the help and power and authority of the Holy Spirit living in us, that we would know the hope of our calling. We would know the reality of this blessed salvation that we have. And as we eat of, of the flesh, Lord, we, just, we want to be a partaker of everything that you accomplish for us in your body as a substitute for us in our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank you, Lord, for the blood of the new covenant that gives us a signed, sealed, and delivered uh, new covenant relationship with you that is, is eternally sealed by your blood. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, next, next week, I don't know if we'll be vertical again, or, but uh, I guess it, looked, it worked out all right. Well, love y'all. We'll see you. Well, first question is, Thanksgiving weekend. Thanksgiving Sunday, you know, people can be here. Yeah, no, I just you can't. You can't what? I am actually this, and I couldn't see the. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Yes, we're always we always we always look forward to. So um, we'll we'll go ahead then, and we'll have a we'll have a uh, we'll get together next Sunday. Amen? Amen. I know you. We'll you'll be, you'll be in the Chickasaw Nation. Okay. All right. For those who can't, I mean, it may be a smaller group, but we'll, we'll. You can catch it later. We have a, a YouTube and all that to catch it. So anyway, love y'all. We'll see you next week. Uh, blessed Thanksgiving. Um, so much to, so much to be thankful for. I'm going to put this up just to see if it's readable now. No, I don't, it's still backwards, I think. But anyway, um, love y'all. We'll see you next week. Happy Thanksgiving, a blessed Thanksgiving. Because of Jesus, we have everything we need and can ever, ever imagine wanting. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.